The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I have five daughters. I don't have five sons. Thank God I'm not a Svadi. You wouldn't let me into shul. Okay. <laughs> Ashkenazim, if you don't have a boy, okay. They still give you an aliyah. If I was here, you guys would be making fun of me every time. It's like, well, I'll see. Did you have a boy? No. No, don't do Bechak Koinim. We don't want your bracha. Okay. <laughs> If you give us a bracha, then maybe we're all going to have only girls. I don't. Okay. Bracha Hashem, I have five daughters. So my youngest one just got married. Bracha Hashem. Bracha Hashem. Just got married. My fifth one just got married, August 7th. Okay. In Jewish, in Yiddish, we call it the Mazinka. Mazinka means the last one. So they have a dance. When the Mazinka, the whole family goes around, and they have, they have a broom. But we, I said, I don't want no broom. Because I'm not brooming my kid away, right? But they come, they give each parent a rose. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. It's called the Muslim. Anyway, I'm very excited. It's my, it's, it's, uh, it's the shidduch crisis, and to marry off five girls, and I have five normal son-in-laws so far. Anyway, right? So that's Baruch Hashem. It's amazing. Exactly four weeks before the wedding, I'm walking out of the Beit Knesset. I trip. I fall. Pop! A bone in my in my foot. I heard it pop. I felt it pop. I broke it in half. Ugh. You think it hurt? It hurt more than that. I'm laying on the floor and I'm like, I just broke my foot. I knew that. And they want to call Hatzalah. I'm like, don't call Hatzalah. I don't want to be embarrassed. I sneak into my car. I go straight to the doctor. I knew right away before I walked in, my foot was already huge. And he takes an x-ray and he says, oh, you broke your lateral, blah, blah, whatever it's called. But I have to tell you, Rabbi, if you had to break a bone, it's the best one to break. I'm like, thank you, thank you, Shkaf. Thank you very much. I'm glad to hear that. I'm really happy. Now I'm happy. I'm good. I said, listen, I have a wedding in four weeks. I need to walk to the chuppah. He says, well, it takes at least eight weeks to heal, six to eight weeks to heal. You're going to have to wear a boot. They don't put on a cast anymore. They put on a big boot, like a ski boot, it looks like. I'm like, you don't understand. You don't know my wife. The, 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 the Namatis know my wife. There's no way that my wife Esti is going to let me walk to the chuppah in a boot. And a wheelchair, she'll tell me, don't come to the wedding. <laughs> Forget about it, I don't want you there. Right? My boot, it doesn't match my socks, it doesn't match my jacket, it doesn't match my suit, it doesn't match my tie. She's not letting me go down in a boot. He says, okay, you'll come the day of the wedding in the morning, I'll take an x-ray, I'll let you know. So I'm very careful the four weeks because I really want to dance, but my foot's killing me. I go Tuesday morning, August 7th, Tuesday morning, I go for the x-ray, he takes the x-ray, he goes, it's starting to heal, but it's still broken. So I said, but you don't understand, I cannot wear the boot. He says, okay, before the wedding, put your foot in a pail of ice for like two hours, have them stretch your shoe, the shoemaker, and you can wear a shoe when you walk to the chuppah, but by dancing, no shoe. Why? He says, because if you don't put on your boot by dancing, someone's going to step on your foot because they see your shoe, and you're going to faint because your foot's not yet healed. I said, okay, I agree. So, Baruch Hashem, I put my foot in the pail, ice, ice, I'm sitting there before the wedding in ice, I stretch my shoe, I, I put on the thinnest, I buy the thinnest pair of socks, and I just get my foot into the, into the shoe. And I, if you look at the pictures, I limp to the chuppah, I'm like, I'm walking, whatever. Okay, Baruch Hashem, I shine my shoes, she was happy. My wife was happy, it matched my suit, it was good. <laughs> we finished the chuppah, I'm sitting down in the chair, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, now I got I to put on the boot. I am not bring this boot on. In front of the whole wedding, the pictures is going to be terrible. Anyway, so I said, you know what I'm going to do? True story, I'm going to do the first dance. When the Khatan comes out, he danced with his father. Then he danced with the father-in-law. I'll dance with him once. They'll take some pictures. And I'll put on the boot. Okay? So, Khatan comes out. He danced with his father. He had a lot of friends. Everyone jumping. I'm sitting there. I get up to the Khatan. And I'm like, Simon Tov, not one minute into dancing, he steps on my foot. <laughs> He's a big guy. I didn't faint, but I got as close to, I saw the Little Dipper, the Big Dipper, every star in Shemayim. So every star, I saw Mars, Pluto, everything. I never in my life felt such pain, ever. And I was like, I didn't know what to say. He's the what I'm going to say. You just stepped on my foot, you broke it again. Like, why don't you tell them, right? So instead of saying, ow, I said, oh, you show me. And I sat down. I was in such pain. Everyone's dancing. One of my grandsons said, Xavier, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, 
yeah, everything's great, yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting there watching my daughter, my daughter's wedding, and I'm missing it. I'm sitting on, on the side. At that point, I knew I wasn't getting my shoe off, that's for sure. My foot was... <laughs> I said, you know what? Wallerstein, listen, you probably just broke it again. I'm going to dance the night away. It's broken anyway. It's killing me anyway. It's not going to get worse. I'm going to dance the night away. In fact, I'm a drummer. And I'm going to use it to play the drums. Because I need my foot to play the drums. And I'm just going to make believe like, you know, and okay, so now I have to wait another eight weeks. I don't have another wedding. Okay. It's my last child. That's it. No more weddings. Or Hashem. This is it. I'm not going to miss my last child's wedding. I want to be in every picture. I want to be jumping up and down. And let me tell you, I danced probably at that wedding more than I danced anywhere else. Because at that point, it was totally numb my foot. I didn't feel it anymore. <laughs> okay, end of wedding. Could not get my shoe off. Forget about it. Took me a day. I slept with my shoe on. <laughs> Looked a little funny. Anyway, that was Tuesday. Friday, I'm on the way to Shabbat. We, we have a... We have the Shabbat Bracha Shabbat, the girl has to make it, it's another wedding, different discussion. And Bracha Shem, there's no band on Shabbos. But anyway, and no photography, I saved some money. And there's a girl that I'm very close to, very, very close to, not my daughter, not my daughter, but no father, dysfunctional family, whatever it is. I've been helping her, she's like my daughter, she's like my daughter, she's not my daughter, she doesn't live by me. And she had called me two, three weeks before the wedding, told me, I got a new dress for the wedding, I got my hair done, I got, I got my hair set up, I got my nails set up, I got my makeup set up. I was like, why are you telling me all this? She's like, because I want you to pay for it. <laughs> Shalom Aleichem, okay. So she had all this stuff set up, okay. And I'm driving, and I turn to my wife, I'm like, Chani was not at the wedding. She told me she had a dress, she told me, what's going on? Hello? Chani, were you at the wedding? Uh, no, I'm sorry, I couldn't come. I'm like, you have the flu? What's going on? She goes, no, Rabbi, I didn't call you, but for the last two weeks, I'm in very bad depression. I lost 10 pounds. I haven't taken a shower in two weeks. I'm not eating. I cannot get out of my bed. I want to die. That's what she said. She said, excuse me, I want to die. I just want to starve in my bed. I don't want to live anymore. I'm done. And I'm thinking, I said, okay, let me just tell you something. I said, I went to my wedding. He stepped on my foot. I never felt such pain. My foot is swollen. I'm sitting in a chair. And I have every right to say, I'm not dancing. In five years, they'll ask me, why aren't you in the pictures? I have a good excuse. I, uh, I'm sorry I missed the wedding, but I had a broken foot. I said, but when you know it's your last wedding, you get up and dance. When it's your last daughter and your last chance, you get up and dance no matter how much it hurts. No matter how broken your leg is, no matter how swollen your leg is, you get up to dance when everyone else is dancing because you know that that's it. I don't have a sixth daughter. I have five daughters. This is it. This is my mazinka. I am not missing my mazinka. And I said to this girl, I said, Chani, every day when you wake up is your last day. Is your mezika. You don't know that tomorrow will ever happen. So many people wake up and there's no tomorrow. And when you know that this could be your last day, as much as it hurts, and you're right, you have a lot of dysfunction, you have a lot of trauma, you're right, and I was right. He stepped on my foot, it was broken anyway, I was in pain, I had a right not to dance. But I'm not going to get another chance. Therefore, I don't care how much it hurts, I'm going to dance. I said, Chani, I don't care how much it hurts. I don't care how much pain you're in. If you understand that every day of your life is your last day, you're not going to lay in bed, you're going to take a shower, you're going to eat, you're going to pick your chin up, and you're going to make that day the best day of your life. I said, I know what it hurts, it still hurts. I'm standing in front of all of you, and let me tell you, my left foot hurts, and it's swollen. But it doesn't matter. Because I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow. If I don't wake up tomorrow, at least I went to Great Neck and I gave a bunch of people a chizuk. So I got to do what I can. Every day by me is my last day. Stop wasting your time with the stupidity. This could be your last day. What are you doing? Use 
the phones when you need them and that's it. You got mothers and fathers and children and brothers and sisters and husbands and wives. What are you doing? And you may be right. It may not be the best marriage. And your parents might not be the best parents. And you're having a very hard time in your life. And you have a right to sit in the chair while the world is dancing and not be part of it. But not if it's your last day. If your last day, you can't sit in the chair. If it's your last day, you got to get up and dance. And no one in this world but God knows when your last day is. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire dot org.